Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to another video of the Marketing Research Series. And this time I want to talk to you about internal validity. So first of all, let's try to understand what is internal validity. So in a causal study or a study that has a causal research design, when a researcher is conducting experiments or researcher is manipulating an independent variable and trying to see how that affects a dependent variable, which is also called the outcome variable, the one that he's measuring, um, the idea is to try and understand that cause and effect relationship. However, when the uh, experiment is being conducted, there are multiple things that can influence that cause and effect relationship. So on a nutshell, internal validity is the extent to which we can say or that we can be sure that the effect that is measuring is actually caused by the manipulation of the independent variable and not due to any other factor. So for example, imagine a absurd experiment, okay, that we're trying to figure out how the amount of beer that one drinks influences the likelihood to purchase a ticket for a concert, okay? So let's assume that the main hypothesis is that if someone is really sober, the likelihood of purchasing a ticket is much lower. But after the person starts drinking a few beers or a few pints, then they're gonna be more excited and more likely to book a ticket for a concert, okay? So imagine that's the crazy experiment. So the first thing that the researcher needs to make sure is how the independent variable was actually manipulated. For example, imagine that when recruiting participants, the researcher said, okay, so this group here, when you come to the, uh, to the experiment, please make sure that 48 hours prior to the experiment, you drink no alcoholic drinks, okay? And then he tells a second group and says, look, when you come to the experiment, make sure that half an hour before you drank two pints. And then another group, he tells them the same thing before, half an hour before, make sure that you drink, I don't know, four glasses of beer or four pints or whatever it is. And then the participants start coming in. How can he be sure that the people who didn't drink actually did not drink any alcohol? Um, how can he be sure that the people who said only drank uh, two pints only had two pints? Uh, and the people who said they had drank five pints actually had five pints. So the first thing is how you manipulate the independent variable. So in this case, of course, that the researcher would need to measure um, the alcohol level. Um, uh, they would make sure that everyone was sober when they arrived and he would give the participants the amount of beer to drink. And then he could make be sure and have controlled that the amount of beer that is supposed to be manipulated is actually what the participants took. I know this is a crazy experience. Uh, this is a crazy example. But what I want to come across for you is that the first thing is how the, that variable, that independent variable is actually manipulated. If the researcher has very little control, then of course the internal validity is going to be very low because you cannot say that what you measured is actually caused by the manipulation of the independent variable because you don't not really sure how that was actually done in the first place. The second thing which is really important is to make sure that the researcher controls for something which are, which are called extraneous variables. So extraneous variables are variables or also called confound variables are variables that can influence the cause and effect relationship. So going back to the crazy example that I gave you about amount of beers that were drunk and the likelihood of purchasing a, a ticket for a music concert, um, imagine that for example, the participants are very close to each other and they start drinking beer and they start interacting with others and say, oh my God, this is, I love this band and let's book the ticket. And of course that one is influencing the other. So the interaction within participants during the experiment will of course influence the effect which the researchers are trying to measure. So in this example, controlling for the participant interaction would be very important. Also making sure that if you wanna have a group that only had two pints, another group that had five pounds, pints, a group which is sober, you gotta really make sure that they drank the exact same levels of alcohol. Also another factor that can influence is if you're testing like for example, um, uh, to purchase the ticket for a certain concert. And if you have lots of participants who are huge fans of, of, the, of the band, of course they would book the ticket anyway. So you gotta make sure that you control for that. You, use a, you either use a fictitious band or so a band that doesn't exist, or you measure before uh, the, how much people actually uh, like the band that is being used for the experiment, because then afterwards you can use that as a moderating factor. So again, really important is to control for extraneous variables. So environmental 
aspect, um, interaction within participants, make sure that the manipulation of the independent variable is the exact same for everyone, that the instructions are the same for everyone, that you have no distractions in the, in the setting and so on. So given that m controlling for all of these factors is so important, that is why in laboratory experiments, the internal validity tends to be higher when you, when you compare that with a field experiment. So a field experiment is an experiment that happens in a natural setting. So when you have a, a laboratory experiment, which is a controlled artificial environment, you have lower external validity. In other words, the extent to which you can replicate those findings to a, a, to a natural or a, a normal environment. But in the other hand, you have a higher internal validity. Because you're controlling for all of these factors, you can say that the effect which is measured is actually caused by the cause. And another factor which is also really important is how you measured the dependent variable. So for example, in this case, this absurd example that I'm giving you, imagine that instead of filling out a questionnaire or answering the computer, the researcher is actually asking. Uh, the participant. Now, how the, the researcher is interacting with the participant can also influence, right? If the, I don't know, the researcher says something really, oh, this pen is actually really good or whatever comment that he or she makes, that can influence also the, uh, the, the respondent. So how you measure dependent variable is really important. So the interaction between um, the researcher and also the participant, the timing of the measurement, how the measurement is done, if it's online, if it's offline, um, how the number of measurements that you have, if you're measuring way too many things, in the end, the final dependent variables that, you, that you're measuring, they may not seem to have an effect because the participant is just so saturated because he or she answered already so many different scales and questions that in the end they're saturated. So make sure also to pay attention to how you measure those dependent variables and also the amount of dependent variables that you use. All right, my friends, so on a nutshell, that's internal validity for you. Hopefully that was useful. And to finish off my musical recommendation this time is a song called 33 by a band called Smashing Pumpkins. You can find this song on the double album that they released in 1995, if I'm not wrong, called Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. It's a beautiful double album and this song, 33, you will definitely enjoy it. So make sure to look for it on Spotify or any streaming service. All right, so all the absolute best, take care and bye bye.